Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun quick tip by Flowmotion. Because today I'm going to show you everything you will ever need to know about masks in 5 minutes. So enough of the talking, let's directly jump into After Effects and in here let's create an orange solid. And let's directly create another one, a green one and put it on top of the orange one. Because masking in After Effects is exactly the same like cutting out paper in the real world. So let's create our first mask. And therefore we go to this icon here, the pen tool. You can also access it by hitting G on your keyboard. And now this is your scissor. Just click a few times and when you click again on the first point that you have created, you can close the mask. Now you can see the orange paper behind the green one and you have created your first mask. And by the way, the lines that create the mask are called path. You also have some pre-made tools to cut out a mask if you go over here next to the pen tool. The rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, the polygon tool and the star tool. They simply create masks in these specific shapes. And now some nice to know shortcuts. By holding down control, the mask will be centered around your mouse. Add the shift button to that combination and it will be a symmetrical mask. And by holding down the space bar while creating the mask, you can position it while creating it. Also nice to know is that you can use your mouse wheel for some fun stuff. For example for round mask edges or to define the number of edges of your star. And double clicking on the icon will create a mask that fits your comp size. So the mask is stored to the layer that was selected while you created the mask. And if you haven't selected a layer while creating the mask, After Effects will create a shape layer instead. <sighs> but that's a different topic. Hit M for mask once and you will see it. And you can also name it now. And here you can also invert it. When you have overlapping masks, you have many options. From add to subtract to difference. Just play with it. So now let's hit M twice and you will see its properties. You can feather your mask, bring down the opacity and also play with the expansion which will make it bigger or smaller. And as you see, all of this is keyframeable. If you want to adjust the path, meaning the shape of your mask, you can easily do that by simply clicking on one of the points and adjusting it. Back on the pen tool, you can also add or subtract points or convert them into a vertex. And this is something you have to play with because you will need that in After Effects a million times for almost every project. Because when you click on a point now, you get two handles and they define the curve of your mask. And if you hold down control, you're able to control only one handle. The Mask Feather tool lets you create points on your mask and by dragging them in or out, you can determine your feather amount for specific parts of your mask. So now it's time for a pro tip. You can also mask out effects. If we take our green layer and fill it with a blue color, it does exactly what you expect it to do. But as soon as you have a mask applied to a layer with an effect, you also get compositing options for that effect. And when I hit the plus sign, it switches to mask one. And now the mask doesn't cut out the layer, but cuts out the effect and therefore defines where the effect is applied. So our green layer has now a blue fill applied to only the masked out part. Pretty cool, huh? But hey, there's even more to it. Maybe you have heard the term rotoscoping before, which simply means masking out an object frame by frame. So for example, let's say you want to mask out that skull. So you create a mask and here's another pro tip for you. If you click and then hold down the mouse button and drag at the same time, you will get your handles automatically. So you can pretty easy mask out any shape. The less points, the better. Because remember, you have to do that on each frame. So now I have masked out the first frame and I click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe and go to the next one and adjust the mask. So time for another pro tip. Go to the first frame, set a keyframe, then go to the last and adjust your mask. You can select multiple points at once and by double clicking a point, the whole mask is selected. And if you skip frames, After Effects will automatically interpolate the missing ones. Now go directly in between and adjust it and do that as often as you need until you get your final result. 
In that way, you will create the least amount of keyframes. But if this is still too much work for you, you will love the mask tracker. Just create a mask around the object you want to roto, then go to the tracker and if you have a mask selected, you can choose from various tracking methods. Once you click analyze, it will automatically create keyframes for you. And if you have a closer look at the tracking methods, you will also find the face tracker, which will automatically track your face and determines some feature points like your eyes, nose and your mouth. And it gets even better. If you have a high contrasted image or an image with an alpha channel, you can auto trace it. Just have a look at all the settings and play with them for different results. And in that way, you can also roto complete shots by simply clicking on work area and not only the current frame. Last but not least, you can also use the mask path for many effects, such as the stroke effect. Or you can use the path and let a text follow exactly that path. Or if you wish, you can even copy a path and paste it onto the position of a layer, which makes animation so much faster. Sometimes the order you drew your mask influences the effect. For example, some effects start on the first point you have drawn, but you can still change that afterwards. Just right click on the point where you want your mask origin, or in After Effects language, your first vertex. Then go to Mask and Shapes, click on Set First Vertex, done. And besides that, you can also convert your text to masks and therefore create your own unique font style. Oh man, that was really a lot of information in a short amount of time. So if that went too fast for you, then my last tip for you would simply be to just watch it all over again. And I wish you a lot of fun with masks in After Effects. <laughs>